In the name of the law, we bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case files. Our story begins on Echoes Creek. It is early morning in September. Sam! What? Isaac Walton never heard of you, I'll bet. Yeah, well, I don't see that you're such a hot fisherman either, Joe. Well, I catch four, didn't I? Uh, they crawl up your line, that's why. Oh, is that so? Besides, I can cast farther than you. How much says it? How much? Oh, I'll bet you two bits I can cast this line farther than anybody. Stop talking so much and let's see you do it. Okay, wise guy, you just watch me here. I'm I'll... watching you. I'll bet you I'll beat you by 50 feet at least. You beat me by talking, you mean? Well, you watch this. I'm watching. Hey, how's that, Joe? Hope you notice that every inch of the line's up. Yeah? Or oh, what's this? Yeah, go on. I'll show you some real casting, <laughs> I will. And I still say that Isaac Walton never heard of you. <laughs> well, let's, let's try it again, huh? For another two bits? Okay. Uh, hey. What's the matter? I think I caught something. Oh, you couldn't catch cold. No kidding, I got, I got a white. Look, look at my line. Well, pull it in then, for the love of Mike. Wind it up fast. Hurry up. Just like a big one, too. Well, wind and stop talking so much. Here it comes. Oh, boy. Sam. What? That ain't a fish. That's a dog or something. Oh, you're nuts. Oh, it ain't a fish, I tell you. Look it. Uh, what can it be? It, it's something wrapped up in a, in a bag, it looks like. Yeah. Here, let's pull it up. Right. Gee, what do you think it is, Joe? I don't know, but I'm going to open it. Hey, give me your knife, will you? Here. Oh, look at you. Come Gee. on, let's go in and start the motor. Yeah. <laughs> What can you tell us, Chief? You wouldn't publish what I could tell you. Ah, tut, tut, Chief, don't lose your temper. Reporters got to live, too, you know. I wonder. Uh-oh, when Chief McDonald gets sarcastic, the case is tough. Right, Chief? I have nothing to say. Who is she, Chief? Who is who? The girl you found, or rather the girl those boys found. What's her name? Where does she live? What do you know about it? Nothing to say. Now, go on, feed it. Uh, how do you spell that name, Chief? Why, you... Uh, hold it right... Okay, thanks. Boy, that'll make a swell shot for the first page. Chief McDonald threatens lousy reporter. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say, Chief? Come on, have a heart. Give, will you? That punk got a picture at least. What do I got? You got more nerve and less brains than anybody I know. Gaston. Shh. Take it easy, Chief. This is an undertaking. Uh, I'm sorry. Darn newspaper reporters get my Irish up every time they corner me. Keep asking me questions before I even get on the case. What's up? Come with me, Chief. Prepare for a shock. Huh? Under that sheet. Gosh. This is terrible. Uh, Who is she? Well, we don't know yet, Chief. Is that all that was found? Yeah, her upper torso, that's all. We're having the river dredge for the rest of her body. Hmm. Looks young, doesn't she? Sure does. Not bad looking, either. Who found her? Two lads while fishing. Question them? Yeah, they look okay to me. Practically frightened them out of their wits, as a matter of fact. Hmm. Did you check her description with the missing persons division? Well, that's being done now, too, Chief. Well, then there isn't much I can do until... No, not yet. It's been reported, however. I figured there was no hurry about it. Certainly there's no doubt she's been murdered. You find part of a woman's body and you decide it's murder? You would be a great detective yet, Gaston. Figuring out a thing like that all by yourself. <clears throat> well, I, I'll go well, on. Well, skip it. When you get all the dope reported headquarters, we got to solve this case, Gaston. Looks like we're going to be up against someone who's plenty tough and cold-blooded. All right, take it easy, Robert. <laughs> Oh, here comes Roberts and Jones. Well, we got the other half of your human jigsaw puzzle, Gaston. Yeah, look. I'll put it up on the table, boy. Mind if I take a shot of that, Chief? Oh, incarnation that you get in here. I just followed those two. Is that so? Well, go on, get out. Now, let's have a look at what's in the bundle, will you? Get out, I say, Gaston. Yes, Chief. Put this guy out before I lose my temper. Come on. Outside. Now, now, Outside. Let's get one, one shot. You'll get a poke if you don't beat it. Come on now, get out. Not. Cut the bag, Roberts. What's that? The same kind of bricks. What do you mean, the same kind? The other bundle. There were two bricks in that, too. Hmm. That yeah, looks like the same guy to me, Chief. No doubt of it. Cover it up. Well, what's the matter, Chief? Yeah, that's, that's a horrible sight. Yeah. I'm going back to headquarters, Gaston. You follow as soon as you're through examining everything. Yes, Chief. Bring Robertson Jones with you. We're going to need plenty of help on this case, or I don't know my murders. Yes, sir. And Gaston. Yeah? Have the coroner look things over right away. I want to know what he thinks. Right. See you later. 
Hey, Chief, do you know who she is? No. Okay, okay, don't lose your temper. It ain't becoming, Chief. And it ain't becoming for you to be bothering me before I start working on this murder. When I have a statement with the press, I'll give it to you. Now you're talking, Chief. I'll be seeing you. Thanks. <laughs> Sit down, Gaston. You too, Roberts. Now, uh, what did you find since I saw you? Oh, well, we checked over the missing persons file. And? and uh, well, we found one girl who seems to tell in every way. Name's Millman. Maybell Millman. Who filed the report? A friend. A girl named Martha Henning. Did she identify the body? Well, Jones went out for her. I expect him back any minute. The body's still at the undertaker's? No, it's downstairs in the morgue. How about the coroner? Did he make his report? Yeah, here's a copy of it. Let's have a look at it. Hmm. No gun wounds. No knife wounds. Hmm. Raisins none. Wasn't shot, stabbed, or hit. Just cut up, eh? Looks that way, Chief. <laughs> What's up, Jones? Uh, this is Miss Henning. She just identified the body. It's Maybell Millman. Yeah. What else do you know? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't ask her anything. Uh, uh, Miss Henning, uh, sit here, will you please? <laughs> I'm Chief McDonald. This is Chief Gaston, Detective Roberts. How do you do? Maybell Millman was a dear friend of yours, eh? Yes, sir. What do you know about her uh, disappearance? Nothing. You reported her disappearance to headquarters, didn't you? Yes, but it's all a mystery to me. I don't know who could have done a thing like that. Oh, come, come, come now, Miss Henning. <laughs> you must control yourself. Keep your chin up. Tell us all you know, and we'll try to avenge this uh, crime. But I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Well, you know who her friends were, don't you? Yes. Well, then give us those names, please. Well, there was Sue Blake. And... Uh, where does he live? What's he do? He's an engineer. He lives in Rosedale. I don't know the address. Well, we'll find it. Who else? You want girls, too, or only men? Everybody. Hazel Colby. She lives on East Avenue. And Bruce Baker. I think she lives at the Hotel Brown. Then there's... Uh, just a minute, please, Miss Hanning. I'm trying to write these things down. Ruth Brown, Hotel Baker... No, the other way around. Ruth Baker, Hotel Brown. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go on, please. Who else? Johnny Boland. I don't know where he lives, but he's on the baseball team. Detroit. Oh, I've heard of him. He was your friend, eh? Who else? Greg Smith. He met Mabel in college. Let me think now. Oh, that's all I can think of at the moment. Well, that's enough to start with, Miss Henning, but if you recall any more names, uh, let us know immediately, will you? Yes, of course. Is that all you want to know? What else can you tell us, Miss Henning? Anything at all about Miss Millman? Did anyone ever threaten her? Was anyone in love with her? Mabel never told me those things. But uh, you were a friend, weren't you? Yes, but, but she was very... Close mouth. Uh, how did you meet her? She roomed in the same house I did. Uh, have we that address? I have all that, Duke Chief. All right, then. You can go now, Miss Henning. We'll be able to get in touch with you if we need you. What do you mean? Uh, you're not planning to leave town or move, are you? Oh, I understand. No, I haven't done anything, so there's no reason for me to run away. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Henning. Goodbye. Well... What do you think, boys? I think she's okay. Yes, so do I. How about you, Chief? I don't know. Well, we got to get started now, Gaston. Yes. You've got the names of Miss Millman's friends. That's right. I want you, uh, Jones and Roberts, to interview every one of those people. Get all the dope you can. Yes, Chief. And we'll meet here tomorrow, say 10 o'clock. In the meantime, I have a few things to take care of. Maybe there'll be a waste of time and maybe there won't. Yes, sir. Uh, well, well, what are you guys waiting for? Uh, come on, man, let's go. <laughs> Miss Colby? Yes, sir. I'm Miss Colby. My name's Jones, Detective Jones. I'd like to speak to you about one of your friends, a Miss Mabel Millman. Oh, Mabel, how is she? Miss Millman is dead, Miss Colby. Miss Millman. Mabel. Dead? Good heavens, how did it happen? She was killed. Yes. And I thought maybe you knew something about her that might help us solve this. She, she was murdered, you mean? Yes. Do you know of anyone who might have threatened her, perhaps? Oh, no, indeed. Maybe I was such a sweet girl. I don't know why anyone would want to... Oh, that's terrible. When's the last time you saw her, Miss Colby? About a month and a half ago, I reckon. She said she was going out of town for a while. Where to, did she say? No. That is, I don't remember if she did. Did she have an argument with anyone? A jilted lover, perhaps? I don't believe maybe I ever had an argument with anyone. Uh, thank you, Miss Colby. Now, goodbye. <laughs> Miss 
Mr. Blake. I'm Detective Roberts. I'd like to speak to you about a Miss Maybell Millman. You knew her, didn't you? No, her. I still do. What's the trouble? She got arrested for speeding? No. She was murdered. Murdered? But who in the world did do it? But I'm trying to find out, Mr. Blake. Do you know who could have done it? I know. It's hard to believe it. Maybe could... What did all this happen, anyway? Three weeks ago, about. Three weeks ago? Oh, poor kid. I'm sorry, Detective Roberts, but I don't know a thing that would help you. You're an engineer, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Working now? Oh, yeah, yes. Where? Uh, the Grogan Construction Company. I've been there for two years. What do you do there, Mr. Blake? Construction engineer. We're handling that mill job over in Greenville now. I see. Now, about Miss Millman. Can you think of anything that would help? No, sir, nothing. I didn't know her very well, you see. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Dugout. Okay, okay. If you'd been able to hit that pitcher, you wouldn't have to crowd in here. Is that so? I don't see that you're leading the league. Uh, Pipe down, you guys, will you? You do more scrapping in this dugout than you do on the field. What's the matter, Bolden? You're training to be a manager? This club don't Please. need a manager. It needs a keeper. You ought to know, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> you're Bolden, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Well, I'm Sheriff Gaston. I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes after the game. What about? Well, I'll tell you later. I'll bet the sheriff ain't after you for stealing bases, Bolin. I know what it's all about. Remember when Johnny got them two hits? Well, they just found out he bribed the pitcher to lay him down the alley for him. Sure, that's right. How else would he be able to smack two hits in one day? One week, you mean. <laughs> uh, why don't you guys pipe down? You're all as funny as a crutch. Hey, the ball game's over, guys. Mike just made it. Let's go. Now, what's on your mind, Sheriff? Well, I'm here to find out what you know about Maybell Millman. Maybell? What about her? Well, suppose you tell me, Bolin. Oh, I don't get you, Sheriff. What's this all about? She was found murdered. Murdered? Well, I... Say, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? Oh, I didn't say you did, Bolin. I'm trying to get some leads from you. What do you know about her? Well, I got a letter from her about a month ago, if that's any help. Yeah? What'd she write? No, nothing much. Said she was coming to town when I look her up. And? Well, I was on the road with a team, never had a chance. We just got back yesterday. Well, have you got that letter? I don't think so. I usually throw them away. How well did you know her, Bowen? Just friends. I wasn't engaged to her or anything. She was just a date when I got to town. Nice kid, though. Have you any ideas, any information at all about who might have uh, killed her? Anyone who's jealous, perhaps? No. Did you have much money or jewelry? Not that I know of, Sheriff. All right, Bowen. I'm going now. But if we need you, I'll be back. Anytime you say, Sheriff. <laughs> Men, I'm ready to start now. So are we, Chief. Now, I've read all your reports, everything you found out from Miss Millman's friends. Not much good, I'd say. Hey, let me do the talking now, Roberts. The three of you have questioned about eight people. Of these, five can be omitted entirely. They either didn't know the victim well enough, or they weren't in the city at all during the last month. Now, that leaves three people. The three I asked you to bring in here. Miss Colby, Blake, and Bolin. You mean one of them did it? Uh, what's the matter, Jones? Uh, you running out of patience? Uh, sorry. Now, in the first place, we know that whoever killed the victim did so with the idea of committing the so-called perfect crime. A crime in which there are either no clues, no apparent motive, or one in which the murderer has a perfect alibi. Well, now, let's discuss the people that you've questioned one at a time. You, Jones, spoke to Miss Colby, and you learned from her that the victim told her she was going out of town. That was a month and a half ago. To that, we can add one more fact. And that is that it is very unlikely that Miss Colby murdered Miss Millman. She hasn't got the strength to cut a body as we found it. So let's go on now to the next person. You, Roberts, spoke to Blake, the construction engineer. He told you very little about Miss Millman. He didn't know her very well. He hadn't seen her in some time. There is therefore no apparent motive. Uh, remember, I said apparent. Now let's examine further. Blake is a construction engineer the present time, supervising the construction of a mill. Now, you don't know this, but I visited that mill a few hours ago. Porous bricks and crescent cement are being used on that job. And the parts of the victim's body were wrapped in crescent cement bags and weighted with porous bricks. What? You mean? For the love of Mike, Chief, that means that it he... It means that he's the best suspect we have, and I'm going to hold him. He's outside now, Chief. I know. I ordered him brought here. Well, do you want to grill him now, Chief? In just a moment. There's one other person I've got to dispose of, Johnny Bolin, the ball player. 
A bowler has a perfect alibi. He can prove that he was traveling with the ball club for the last month. He could have sneaked away for a few hours, couldn't he? Could have, yes, but I don't think he did. Well, that means that Blake is the one that might have... He's actually... the best we have, men. Now, that's all it means. Now, go on. Get him in here. All right, sit down, Blake. The chief wants to speak to you. Blake, I have a reputation for coming to the point, not wasting much time. Uh, you should have been an engineer, Chief. Uh, this isn't funny, Blake. This is serious. Very serious. I'm sorry. Blake, did you kill Maybell Millman? Did I? Say, what is this? Thought you didn't want any wisecrack. Answer my question, Blake. Did I kill her? Of course not. What would I want to kill her for? That's what I want you to tell me. I don't get this at all, Chief. Are you kidding me, or are you... Blake, I'm going to hold you for the murder of Maybell Millman. What? Why, that's ridiculous. You can't do this to me. Can't I? Take him down, Jones, and book him for murder. Uh, you can't do it, I tell you. I'm on, as innocent of that murder as you are. You've got nothing on me. Come on, Blake. Take your hands off me. Don't touch me. Stop. Let me know. I tell you, I didn't kill me. Come on. I didn't let me know. Let me know. I didn't do it. I tell you, I... Well, that's that. Say, Chief, I thought you were going to give me a break. You said you'd give me the dope on that jigsaw murder. Well? Well, I just saw one of your men dragging that young engineer to the desk. What's the charge? Let's have the story, will you? The charge is murder. No kidding. And my old man wanted me to be an engineer. Well, what else? How did you get him? Did he confess? Uh, come here, I... Miller. I want to talk to you alone. Oh. Gaston, Roberts. Yes, Chief. Yeah? If there's one thing arresting a suspect, and it's going to be much tougher now to prove it. Yeah, that's right. But I don't understand what you I want. want both of you to get some rest. Come back here tonight. You mean you want to be alone with that nosy reporter, don't you, Chief? Come back here tonight. <laughs> The chief bit off more than he can chew, Robert. Everyone's raising Mary Keene over the arrest of Blake. Yeah, did you see the papers tonight? All about how they beat him up and gave him the third degree and all that rot. Well, yeah, chief can thank Miller for that. Give that guy a hair, and when he gets through writing it up, it's a fur rug. Hello, Jones. Where's the chief? Downstairs with Blake's doctor lawyer. I give him a once-over. Counting the fractured skulls, I guess. That's what they get for believing what they're reading the papers. Yeah, we were just saying about the same thing. My guess is it's going to be plenty tough to pin a murder charge on that guy when all they got is a few bricks and two cement bags. Yeah, you're right. I don't care what you say. Now, Blake stays in jail until the grand jury... Well, but the grand jury will never indict him, and you know it. You have no right to keep that lad in jail. Besides, Chief McDonald, the public is going to know the way you beat him up. Judge Smith is right, Chief McDonald. You had no right to injure Blake that way, even if he is a murderer. Thank you, you should know my reputation now by this time. I have no sympathy for any criminal. And I don't intend to treat them with kid gloves. That boy is suffering from a fractured skull. Did you hear that, Chief McDonald? Dr. Fritch's diagnosis... Dr. Fritch's alone... diagnosis doesn't interest me. Blake has a fractured skull, well now... And all those other things that he mentioned, well, it's unfortunate. Blake killed Maybell Millman. Now, do you think I'm sorry for him? Well, I'm not. I, uh, I suppose there is something to what he says, Smith. That's so? Well, I'm sorry I can't agree with you, Dr. Fritch. Good night. Hmm. Well, no one can accuse him of not being loyal to his client. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, sit down, Dr. Fritch. I'd like to ask you a few questions while you're here. Uh, certainly, certainly. Anything you want to know. Has Blake really got a fractured skull? Well, now, that's hard to say without an X-ray. I'd say, however, that he uh, complains of symptoms that uh, might be the result of a fractured skull. Uh, pains in the head I and... I see. Uh, you know Blake, don't you? I uh, met him before, uh, professionally. That's why I was uh, called to examine him. You treated him, eh? That's the only time you ever saw him? Why, I uh, believe so, yes, sir. I understand he supervised some building that you had done, an extension to your office or something like that. Right? Oh, uh, did he? Uh, well, there were so many mechanics there, I uh, wouldn't remember. Would you remember if porous bricks were used on your job or crescent cement? I, uh, I, no, I don't believe I would. Uh, uh, what makes you ask a question like that, uh, The Chief same McDonald? reason I have to ask any suspect, Dr. Fritch. Suspect? What do you mean? Sit down, doctor. You're not leaving this room for some time. Yet. Why, this is... Sit down, I say. What is the meaning of this, Chief McDonald? Have you gone out of your mind? No, I'm simply trying to solve a murder. And what in the world have I got to do with a murder? Dr. Fritch, you have everything in the world to do with this murder. You knew Maybell Millman, didn't you? I uh, saw her once or twice uh, in my office. Go on, what else? What do you mean, what else? I want to know everything. The last time you saw her, what you did? Now look here, Chief McDonald. You have no right to ask me those questions, and you know it. Did you love her? 
lover. Well, that's ridiculous. Dr. Fritch, I'm holding you for the murder of Mabel Millman. You're crazy. Another day you'll be holding everyone in town for that murder. Everyone in town didn't leave his scalpel in one of the bundles. Uh, a what? One of your knives. The one you dissected her body with. What's the matter, Doctor? You've turned white suddenly. What? Some water. I'll get it. You feel well enough to talk? I... I have nothing to say. No? Well, then I'll do all the talking. I'm going to tell you what happened. Maybell Millman visited your office. You fell in love with her. You asked her to visit you again. She did. You made advances to her. She spurned them. So one day... But why? Tell me why. Don't be silly. I don't have to give you any reason. I just don't love you, that's all. Maybell, I love you. I'm wealthy. I can give you anything you want. Anything. Why don't you... Stop that, please. I love you, Maybell. I want you. You said that already. You laugh at me, huh? I don't mean to laugh at you. Really, I don't. But this is all so silly, the whole thing. Why? Well, I'm so young and active, and you're much older and more settled. It just can't be, don't you see that? No. I love you, and love can do everything to everybody. Oh, stop that. You're talking like a trashy... I can't help it, Mabel. What is it? I don't give up easily. I tell you I want you, and I'll do anything, anything, you hear, to get you. Why don't you give me a fair trial? See me. Go out with me now and then. Then if you don't love me, I, I'll give you up. No. The more I see you, the more difficult it'll be to stop seeing you. That final? Yes. Now give me your hand and let's say goodbye like two sensible people. Yes. Yes, of course. Goodbye, Mabel. Goodbye! No, no! You thought you could get away from me, did you? What you want, you no, want! Stop it, please! Uh, if I can't have you, no one else will see! No one else will! Ah! Oh, she was dead. You decided to dispose of the body. But a dead body is a clumsy object, difficult to conceal. Ah, oh, I have what you said. I'll cut it into small pieces. It'll be easier that way. And that's what you did. Then that night, you put the bundles into your car. That's how the perfect crime was committed, Dr. Fritch, wasn't it? I think he's fainted, Chief. Take him away. Any statement for the press, Chief? You here again, Miller? Oh, be regular, will you? What kind of a statement do you want? Well, what do you think of the verdict? Doc Fritch was found guilty of manslaughter. Well, you can say that Chief McDonald thinks he was guilty, too. Oh, what kind of a statement is that, Chief? <laughs> uh, somebody else wants a statement, Chief. And so who? We, Roberts and Jonesy and I. We'd like to know if, uh, well, when you're ready to tell us, where you found Dr. Fritch's scalpel and how you know he did it. And well, I'll tell you everything, boys. When I'm through, I'll bet you'll agree that it was all very simple. In the first place, I knew that Blake was as innocent of that murder as you were. You did? Well, then why didn't uh, you... Just a minute, Gaston. I'll come to that. When I examined the victim's body, I decided on one thing. Whoever cut her up was an expert, a physician. That was clue number one. Now you ask, why didn't I arrest her physician and let it go at that? Well, I didn't have enough on him, that's why. So I decided to make Blake the goat, because I knew that Fritch was Blake's as well as the victim's physician. Now, after I arrested Blake, I had Miller here fill the papers with news about the terrible beating that Blake got during the third degree. And I told Blake that if he wanted to be a free man soon, to put on the act of his life while he feigned all kinds of symptoms. The rest was easy. Blake's lawyer intervened. What was more natural than that he should bring along Blake's physician? And at last, I had Fritch here just as I wanted him, free from any suspicion whatsoever. Now, here was my idea, and you will agree it was pretty simple. I suspected Fritch of the murder, and I reasoned that a guilty man would be the first to shift that guilt on some other person. That's exactly what happened, if you remember. I argued that it made no difference if Blake was injured. He was guilty, and I wasn't going to treat any criminal with kid gloves. I remember that. 
Fritch, if you recall, changed his manner immediately. It was then that he turned to Smith, Blake's lawyer, and said something to the effect that I was justified in all that. Fritch fell hook, line, and sinker for my little plan, and the rest was easy. His change in manner clinched my suspicion. But where in the blazes was that scalpel you found? Uh, up here in my head, there was no scalpel. And I knew I had him on the ropes, and I had to give him my best punch. Mm, he might have saved his neck if he weren't so anxious to pin this murder on Blake. Exactly. Well, I'll be... Uh... Oh, boy, oh, boy, what a statement that is. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. <laughs> again when truth and justice triumph in the name of the law. <laughs> 